On December 6th, 1927, the business district of Hamilton flooded with holiday shoppers enjoying the unusually warm 60 degree day. With the sun shining, big crowds filled High and Third Streets with merriment and cheer as Christmas approached. Jostling among the shoppers at 1040 a.m., a large man in a dark overcoat approached another who was aimlessly standing at the busy intersection watching construction on the Butler County Courthouse Dome, which had been destroyed by fire almost two decades earlier. How are you, Fred? The first man called out and then walked toward him as if to shake hands. Fred Philpot recognized the familiar face, took a step back in surprise, muttering a hello. As the word hung in the air, the large man whipped out a pistol from his inside pocket. With dozens of onlookers on the busy street, he fired once. The bullet hit Fred above the left eye, killing him instantly. The murderer, Albert Bowling, a Kentucky native working in the Highland Park Ford factory in Detroit, had been visiting his son and daughter who lived in Hamilton. After shooting Philpot, Bowling calmly walked across High Street. Retired Butler County Sheriff Frank Pepper saw the murder and apprehended Bowling a minute later without a fight. Dr. Walter Coakley reported the bullet entered near the left eye and pierced the brain, causing instant death. When Bowling later confessed to city detectives, what seemed like a random act of violence turned into one of the chief reasons for murder during the roaring 1920s, a love triangle. Bowling, 45 years old, revealed to police that Phil Pot had stolen his wife Myrtle two and a half years earlier while living in Clay County, Kentucky. Unable to make ends meet for his family and nine children, Bowling left for Detroit. He lived in a boarding house and saved every penny to pay off the mortgage on his farm back home and provide for his nine children. Phil Pot, known in those parts as something of a ladies' man, charmed Myrtle and convinced her to leave the farm and children behind. They ran off to Hamilton, some 200 miles north, to start a new life. Fred and Myrtle also took 3,000 of the 5,000 that Bowling had sent back for the mortgage. That sum would be about $100,000 in today's money. Questioned after his arrest by Hamilton detectives, Bowling blurted out, quote, you don't think I did this without a reason? I killed him because he stole my wife because he broke up my family. It drove me crazy to think of slaving every day to support the children and have him enjoy himself off the money. The Cincinnati Inquirer called the shooting, quote, a murder resulting from the age-old cause, the eternal triangle, but brought about in perhaps the boldest and strangest manner ever recorded in public records. All right, here now to talk with us more about this, I want to welcome back the man of history uncovering these mysteries, cultural historian Bob Batchelor. Bob, thank you for joining us this morning. Good morning, Clyde. Okay, uh, so we have heard now about this heinous act in broad daylight. So what happened at the trial? Well, the trial was a sensation, as you can imagine. Bowling actually had the largest bail in the history of Butler County $30,000, which his family helped him raise. He gets uh, in front of the jury in early February 1930, and it's just pandemonium because newspapers all over the nation had picked up the story. The state argued that he uh, premeditated the murder, actually, that he came to Hamilton with the idea of killing Fred Philpott, whereas Bowling's uh, attorneys said that it was self-defense. And they, they claimed and they found witnesses who actually happened to be all of Bowling's relatives that Philpott had reached in his pocket prior to being shot. And they deliberated over the course of three days. And then in 50 minutes, the jury decides that Bowling should go free. Pandemonium erupted. His children, who were all there, were crying. He burst out in tears. But it was crazy 1920s trials. You remember George Remus's murder of his wife in Eden Park kind of still hung over the area. And so oh. this idea that you were allowed to exact revenge over someone that broke up your home was was an interesting idea. And remember, this is only 90 years ago. And so... Uh, times have changed and, and the way that we deal with murderers certainly have changed.
Oh, Bob, briefly, did you uncover any additional information about Fred Philpot and Myrtle Bowling? Well, certainly Fred was not a nice guy. There is lore that says that he actually beat Myrtle and mm. they had a 10 month old son together and he supposedly didn't treat her all that well. But what I do know and did find out is that Philpot was often armed himself and people told him that, uh, told Bowling that if Philpot saw him, he would murder him. But what happened is that three months prior to this murder, Philpot got arrested for con having a concealed weapon. He had a 38 snub nose pistol mm. and the police took it off him and fined him. And so on that fateful meeting on High Street, right in downtown Hamilton, Philpot is unarmed and Fred Bowling then has his chance to murder him. Oh, wow. What an amazing turn. So uh, let's pe let's help people connect with you to follow more of this story and some of the others that you're working on. How do they do that? Certainly, you can check me out at my website, BobBachelor.com. I'm also on Twitter and of course on Facebook. And let me just say, people, uh, viewers reacted so well to our Rookwood Madman story that they were begging me to do a Hamilton story. And so that's where uh, this came from. So I'll say again, <laughs> viewers, go on Facebook and tell us what you want to see because there's lots of fun true crime stories and everybody loves true crime today. So glad to do it for you. All right, let's find out who will be next. Bob, thanks so much for talking to us today. Have a good day. Thank you, Clyde. All righty. Mona?